Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of CNC Productions and again we are on the streets of Philadelphia and we are heading to the Philadelphia Academy of Natural Sciences um, which is the Natural History Museum here in Philadelphia. Um, um, I did a video on the um, UPenn uh, Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology so if you haven't seen that then you can go ahead and check it out. I hope you guys are enjoying this um, sort of little mini vlog series that I've been doing on for <coughs> tourist attractions. And if you want to see more of it, then hit that thumbs up button and comment and like. So yeah, we're going to be heading there right now. And uh, this has one of the um, better dinosaur fossil collections. So I'll be doing some of it. And there it is, there's the Philadelphia skyline. And all of its splendor. Shut up. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys over there. Look, guys. Look at this. Running right outside the parking garage, and I just found the ran most random thing ever. Just to see. You never know what you're going to find in a wild parking garage. Hey, we have a wild Volvo. And over here, a wild HHR. Now, I don't want to make eye contact. Funny thing is, I actually don't watch much Crocodile Hunter anyway. Oh. Well, we made it, and we're off to a great start. We have two Deinonychus up there. Yeah, this is the Philadelphia... Sorry. Fresh new week. This is the Philadelphia Academy of Sciences here in Philadelphia, PA, and we are going to be exploring their dinosaur exhibits. Outside in. So yeah, welcome to the Academy of Natural Sciences of Drexel University. Oh man. They look like from the Jurassic Park too. So yeah, we're going to be be back right whenever we enter the dinosaur exhibit. This is the Elasmosaurus with a small head. leading to over 46 vertebrae. We have the Albertosaurus, which is unusual among Tyrannosaurus. For that, the horns of its eyes, and here we have what its musculature might have looked like, as well as some plaster casts of its, um, plaster casts of its skeleton. And here. Yes, this is the uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex that's in here, and that's the first thing you see whenever you come in. Shouldn't need to give you too much information about this thing. Definitely one of the cool. This is the Tylosaurus, which may or may not have been the Mosasaur that you saw in Jurassic World, but it's definitely pretty darn big. Its snaking body was about 50 feet long, and it's one of the largest Mosasaurs that ever lived. Tylosaurus and other mosasaurs actually belong to the same family of snakes called Squamata. And this is a Xyphactinus. With horrific looking teeth, this thing was basically a combination shark and piranha. And it lived in western USA along the coastlines. As you can see, the Tylosaurus had a gigantic jaw with huge teeth. And down here, further, once we get past the 50-foot body of the Tylosaur, are small fossils of Archelon. And these are, actually, oh no, these are not Archelon, these are Protostega. And Protostega was actually one of the second largest turtles that ever lived um, after Archelon. Archelon was still the biggest sea turtle, about the size of a VW Beetle. 
That's Protostega. This is Toxochiles, this little thing here. And over here, if you play Jurassic Park Builder, you might recognize this. This is Platycarpus, or the newer, um, sorry about all this glare, but, um, the new name for this thing is the Pleo Platycarpus. And this is, uh, in the same family as the giant Tylosaur that you saw back there. Here we have an Ichthyosaurus with a lot of its snout broken off. And this is a jumble of bones that hasn't been, um, taken out. If you look over here, this is a Lambiosaurus head. And Lambiosaurus was a, uh, a large, 50 foot long hadrosaur. This is a Chasmosaurus. Basically the same thing as the Triceratops, except it had its frill was a lot larger and it had openings. In fact, its gigantic frill openings led to its name, which means Chasm Lizard, or Opening Lizard. It had three horns on its head, but were not quite as large as the Triceratopses. It's one of the more famous of the Ceratopsians. But this is a small species of Ceratops known as Ava Ceratops. And as you can tell by looking at the uh, skeleton, none of the bones in here are real. And if you get a close look, you can tell it's a plaster cast. But that's what Ava Ceratops would have looked like. It had two tiny brow horns and one large nose horn. Why the nose horn looked bigger in the illustration is because it had a, um, a keratin sheath that would have gone over the horn to make it look larger. This is fossils of Hadrosaurus, and the fossils that you see here um, are real. And this dinosaur was found very close to Philadelphia in New Jersey. It's actually the state dinosaur of New Jersey. This is probably one of the most controversial of the dinosaurs, is the Taurosaurus. Anybody familiar with dinosaurs knows why. Um, this creature was made famous by the Walking with Dinosaurs episode 6 in which it appeared. A lot of people consider or th um, speculate that Taurosaurus is actually an, an adult version of Triceratops. The only thing that's really stopping that theory is because Triceratops has no holes in its frill, but Taurosaurus does. So, um, people have speculated that perhaps as Triceratops aged, the, horn, the holes in the skull would appear. But, um, unfortunately we don't have too, too many fossils, so we can't really tell. The reason that you shut the Deinonychus out on the back is because you'll find them here. And in amongst the um, smaller dinosaurs here, which are known as Tenontosaurus. You can find the terrifying skull of the Deinonychus. Which means terrible claw. There it is. There's a famous sickle shaped claw that you probably recognize from Jurassic Park. And Deinonychus is actually the Velociraptor that you'll see in the movies. But they abandoned the Velociraptor name because it sounded cooler than Deinonychus. Another interesting fact about Deinonychus is whenever um, Michael Crichton wrote the original Jurassic Park novel, the name Velociraptor, or the name, the name Velociraptor had not been invented yet, and Velociraptors categorized, or Deinonychus was categorized under the Velociraptor genus. But then later it was given its own. And the Tenontosaurus that you'll see here is a type of ornithopod with a very long tail. It goes all the way back out to here. These are all casts of extremely famous dinosaur skulls. This is a cast of one of the most famous dinosaur skulls of all time, the skull of the Eoraptor. And this skull gave us our best glimpse at the Eoraptor. And over here, the slightly larger skull is the Herrerasaurus, um, which was a slightly larger dinosaur that lived in the same era or the same uh, area. This is the Dilophosaurus skull.
which of course you'll recognize in Jurassic Park, and is a lot larger than you might think. This is a Majungasaurus. Um, and like I said, all these are cast, they're not um, the actual fossil. But the Majungasaurus also has a horn on top. And a lot of people probably know this from Jurassic Park World the game. And that one was found in Madagascar. Probably has the most fossils out of any of the Abelosaurids. Its old name was Majungatholus, and that was because of this hard, um, harder area on the top. People thought that it was a Pachycephalosaur, um, but that was eventually disproven. This tiny skull is the skull of a Velociraptor, and compared to my hand, it's not very big at all, which is um, one of the misconceptions people have. But Deinonychus and Velociraptor combined is that Velociraptor was not very large, and this is the biggest cast, and this is of the Acrocanthosaurus. Um, the Acrocanthosaurus, as you can see, has a very similarly shaped skull to Allosaurus, although its skull is just about as big though much narrower than the one of Tyrannosaurus Rex, which has one of the biggest and heftiest skull of any of the theropods. Well, I have one more dinosaur skeleton to show you on this level, and then we'll head up to level two, where we will see even more dinosaur fossils. And that is this massive creature. This is the Carithosaurus. And it's actually a lot bigger than you might expect. It's about 30 feet long really big. I mean, the camera doesn't actually even do justice as how enormous this thing looked. Here's a model of a Triceratops. And there's its horn. That is an Ankylosaurus tail club. And that's a Parasaurolophus head. And here we have a Pachycephalosaurus. Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis, one of the harder names to pronounce. And further down the hall, you will see some fossil eggs of the Myasaura, which are incredibly rare. And uh, these are the eggs of Spherotholus, which is a Pachycephalosaur that lived in China. These are macrolithus eggs, which are quite large. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back off, Triceratops. I would totally back off if I were you. Yeah, you gotta feel bad for this poor T-Rex. Let's see, there's its lower jaw, and there's its top jaw. So, it's got a little bit of a side bite. So. Maybe it was doomed after all. If you're lucky enough to find another extra dinosaur skeleton, here's the cast of the skin impressions found on Hadrosaurus. And here is a full skeleton of the Hadrosaurus. There it is. If you'll see, it has a small bump on the top of its nose. And that was probably used in vocalizations. I could get inflate a sack there. And there, we have a Megaloceros head. And there's Megaloceros, or a, a statue of it, compared to a person. So that thing was huge, and there are its antlers, which are huge. <laughs> well, would you look at that? It's Christmas morning for every dinosaur lover. Okay, so I'm editing the video that you are currently watching. Um, there was just one last thing that I wanted to show you, and that was this. Yeah, got a new mouse pad there. Um, the irony is that I've actually never seen Game of Thrones, but that thing just looks really cool. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you did, then subscribe and like the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.